Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'll be showing you a unique PBR material option in the Appearance Editor, called the Generator. Unlike previous pre-designed texture options, the Generator allows you to create your own unique wood and metal textures from scratch, procedurally generating all sorts of realistic materials using intuitive parameter-driven designs based on natural wood properties such as strands, knots, cross screens, and more. Alright, so in Character Creator 2.0, there is a new library of sample content that you can find by going under Accessories and into the Other section that is indicated by the Hanger icon. We're currently using the default white base wooden crate, so let's go over and open up the Appearance Editor. We can close down the panels on the left to give us some more space to admire the beautiful box we're about to create. In order to find the new PBR material types in Character Creator 2.0, you will need to go under Materials, Base, then Material Type, where you will find the Generator Leather slash Wood designation. From there, you'll find the more specific Base Generator defined as Wood under Materials slash Base slash Generator. You can choose the category as Leather or Wood. Under Base, you can still tweak your material values such as Hue, Saturation, and Luminosity. This sample white box already contains a color value, so let's restore it back to the default wood look by setting the luminosity back to 0.5. You can also double click the text of any parameters to set it back to default. Okay, now let's go into the first modifier section of our crate and adjust some of the general base values. You'll see that the pattern parameter will give us a number of different wood strand patterns along the side. I'll set the value to 5 for now. From there, you can adjust the base color. If I choose a light blue, for example, it will appear as though we have a uniformly painted sky blue crate. I'm going to enter in some values manually and give it a nice, rich, woody color. The age value is rather sensitive, so you want to be careful with this one. You can make your wood base look incredibly raw and rough, but often it has more effect if you use it along with other parameters I'll show you later, to make it look a bit more randomized. We'll set it to a more subtle value and move on. Lacquer is a really cool value that allows you to create a sort of protective sheen over your wood by simulating a transparent lacquer paint. You'll notice that if I use the forward slash key to rotate the light source, a wood with a higher lacquer value will present more specular reflection, as it simulates a smoother, slick surface with a lacquer finish. I'll set it back to a more unfinished value and move on to texture. Texture is used to enhance all the texture strengths, particularly the normal map value. You'll see what it increases that the age ridges appear to be deeper. You can use the texture value to really emphasize age. Let's move on to strands now. The amount of strands is pretty straightforward. You'll see that it affects the density of the horizontal lines. Then we have hue, saturation, and lightness values. The cool thing about these values under the strand section is that you will get variable lightness and darkness according to where the strands are. You can use this to create contrast from the base wood color and make it seem more like an old country homestead furniture. Use the saturation and lightness values to create a richer or more faded look for your wood color. Length will adjust the length of your strands, although you won't be able to see much of an effect on a small crate like this. Use the polish value to smooth the strands out and make them look less noticeable. If you take that value down, it will make the strands more raw and extruded as if there hasn't been any sanding on the surface of the wood at all. You'll want to make sure you don't take this value too extreme, otherwise you'll notice some surface issues. Finally we have depth, which works in combination with polish to simulate a more raw appearance, almost as if you can feel the rugged texture of the strands more as you increase the depth value. Next is the knot section, where you can add some knots to your wood. The amount slider is pretty straightforward. If I move it up, you'll notice a slight change in the appearance of the knots in the wood surface. You can further emphasize this by decreasing the number of strands, in which case you'll have some very knotty wood. Disorder will randomize the knot size a bit more. However, as with depth, you'll want to be very sensitive with this value. In the cross screen section, you can adjust the amount of ridges that run perpendicular to the wood strands for a rougher surface appearance. The amount, depth, and length parameters here are all similar to what we saw in the strand section. If you decrease the length value under cross grains, you can get a nice effect where you can see small disconnected ridges that give the surface a more natural and randomized appearance. Finally, there's my favorite wood section, Rot. Here you can apply a rotting effect to your wood. If you adjust the hue to an unnatural color like light blue, it may appear as though parts of your paint have worn away to reveal a different layer of paint underneath. 
A darker color close to black can make it appear as though there is a wet mold rotting the surface. Whereas if you change it to a light and less saturated color, you can create the appearance of light or fluffy mold or dried mud scuffs in certain areas. Let's minimize the rot value right now as I want to have a nice sophisticated deep colored wood result in the end. I can achieve this by further tweaking the overall wood appearance. Here I want to increase the contrast and give minimal luminosity to achieve a nice dark rich base color to look like painted wood. I'll leave the saturation where it is basically, but I want to reduce the normal value to create a smoother look for the surface. I could increase the luminosity value in the emissive section if I wanted a glowing box, but this crate is going to be non-magical for the time being. A low luminosity value under roughness will give us a much more polished final look, similar to the lacquer setting you saw previously. You can also use metallic, however since this is a wood box, we'll just stick with the classy looking painted crate we have on the screen right now. With Wood Generator, it's possible to create all sorts of natural woods with the powerful parameters that you've seen here. And you're not restricted to crates either. Try it out on things like houses, carts, desks, anything that's made of wood really. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.